Hi, my name is Alan Binder. I'm a lunar and planetary scientist and a spacecraft design and systems engineer. I have some other YouTube videos that you might want to look at concerning the moon and the uh, space exploration program, etc. But today I'm going to talk to you about three-dimensional viewing. Now we're in an era when TV movies are coming out in 3D and I think that's great. It's a, it's a great enhancement. But there's a very simple thing you can do to view anything you want to in three dimensions. I discovered this actually during uh, the mission that I flew to the Moon Lunar Prospector. In my cubicle next to the mission control where I controlled the spacecraft, I had a picture of the Arizona desert. Uh, it's a saguaro cactus, mountains, etc. And one day I looked up at that and something occurred to me which I will explain to you in a minute which led to what I'm going to discuss in great detail. First of all, let's talk about 3D viewing. Most people understand that we see 3D because we have two eyes, we have stereoscopic vision. However, what most people don't quite realize is that stereoscopic viewing only goes out a few hundred feet. You see stereo because your left eye and your right eyes have a slightly different perspective. It's called parallax and if you have your finger up there and you close one eye back and forth you'll see your finger jumps back and forth. This, our brain takes this information and translates it into a three-dimensional picture. You must remember that our eyes do not see, they do not see in 3D. Our mind takes this data that our eyeballs give them and transform it into a three-dimensional picture. But beyond a few hundred feet you do not see parallax. Your eyes are too close. If they were this far apart, you could see three dimensions much further out. Beyond that point, we really see depth, what I like to call depth perception. You notice that the houses that are you know, way down the block, you still see them in 3D. You see them as a solid figure. You see the mountains way in the background. You know that they're a few miles off, etc. This is not stereo, it's depth perception. Now, I'd like you to do a very simple thing. You're looking around the, the room you're in. I assume most people are sitting in front of a computer right now who are viewing this. And you're in a room. You're looking around and you have both eyes open and you see everything in three dimension. Everything has depth, you have a form to it. It's not a flat picture. As it would be if you were looking at a picture of the room. Now, close one eye and look at the room. You will notice you still see 3D, you still see depth perception. The wall uh, at the far end of the room looks further away than the chair next to you or the table in front of you or whatever it is. Your mind is taking all the visual cues and changing that into either, a, if you want to call it a 3D picture or depth perception, it really doesn't make any difference. You don't need two eyes to have depth perception. And this is the cue. There are many cues that we have to help with our depth perception. That's why you actually see things at great distances in 3D even though you do not have a stereoscopic view of it. One is things get smaller. People get smaller. Cars get smaller. Trees get smaller. The mountains get further and further away in the sense that there's dust and, and, and cloud, not clouds, but stuff in the atmosphere and it gets hazy. And so the mountains, as they look further and further away, get dimmer and dimmer and you, your mind can interpret all this information into a three-dimensional picture even though you are not seeing it stereoscopically because it's too far away. Interestingly enough, the astronauts on the moon where there was no atmosphere and hence no haze, no obscuration of any kind and where they had no experience looking at craters at different sizes at different distances, they could not tell distances. Almost all of you can go outside and say, if there are mountains in your area, you can say, well, those mountains are, you know, 10 miles away or 15 miles. You, you can judge these things because of all these visual cues that your mind has learned to use. Now, a tiny child who's just learning, you know, about life, as you probably know, when children are born, their eyes are not coordinated. They have to learn to coordinate their eyes and see in 3D. And with time, they learn all these visual cues. And by I'm not sure what age, probably three or four or five, they probably can start to have depth perception uh, without the stereo part. So the point is that a picture of a scene, as I had a picture of 
uh, the Arizona Sonora Desert on my wall in Mission Control, that has all the visual cues. The mountains, you know, get less distinct in the background, the cactus gets smaller the further away, the ridges right next to you, you know, had more detail in them. But the problem is when you're looking with both eyes at a flat picture, your stereo, div your stereo vision is telling or interpreting by your brain that this is a flat picture. There is no parallax. However, just as I said, if you close your eye and look around the room, you can see 3D because your mind takes all these cues and changes it into a 3D picture. If you look at any flat picture, be it a book, be it a photograph, be it a TV screen, be it a movie screen, whatever, and close one eye and concentrate on that scene and let your mind do its work, you will begin to notice that all of a sudden there begins to be depth. It doesn't take very long, a few seconds or several seconds, but your mind can actually begin to do what it does, and that's change the picture into a three-dimensional view. Now, when I discovered this, I looked up and I tried it, or I thought this through, I tried it, and my golly, I could see the cactus in the distance getting further and further away, and the mountains were further and further away. So I went home, told my wife, and she tried it, and it works very simply. You just close one eye and concentrate on that particular scene, and let your mind do its job. We thought, gee, we can watch TV uh, in 3D anytime we want, which we can, and we do. When we go to the movies, we do the same thing. The trouble is, it's very uncomfortable to sit there with one eye closed for a very long time. So we thought, okay, let's get eye patches and see how that works. That works fine, except again, it's kind of you know, uncommon, and it's, we don't really do it. I don't think most people would want to do it. Not that you can't do it, but we find that it's not really a lot of fun to do that. The other thing that one has to remember, when you're looking with two eyes, each eye has some defects in it, and so the scene is a little less clear with one eye or the other eye, but when both eyes are viewing it, your brain then integrates those pictures and wipes out the little imperfections, and so you have a little bit more clarity than with one eye. So in reality, my wife and I and my friends who I've told this about really don't use it to watch TV very much, but anytime you want to, and for example, when my wife and I are in a movie and there's some scene which has a lot of depth in it, beautiful canyons or mountains, we just close one eye and then we see the 3D effect. Another thing that we find amusing, since there are a lot of trailers about the 3D movies that are out and they say, come and see the 3D movie with the glasses and so forth, we just close one eye and see the trailer in 3D with virtually no practice, but just letting your mind take those visual cues. You can see anything you want to in three dimensions, regardless of what the format, TV, movies, books, etc. We got uh, Arizona highways, for example, and there are a lot of beautiful pictures that you could look at in 3D. Uh, any, anything like National Geographic, which has beautiful pictures, any book you want, any, anything you want to look at in 3D, close one eye, learn this technique, and you can see the 3D world any way you want to with any medium. Now, as a lunar and planetary scientist, I've seen a lot of pictures of Mars and the Moon and other planets, and of course, they are just a flat picture. I now can just look at that picture, close one eye, and see Mars, the, for example, the pictures the rovers have been taking, in 3D without the usual stereoscopic uh, equipment that one uses because most of these pictures are taken so that you can get three-dimensional imaging. Similar pictures of the moon from above, I can look at a crater and I can see that it's a three-dimensional object. So, in summary, all you have to do is learn to close one eye and let your brain change a two-dimensional flat screen picture into a three-dimensional image and enjoy a lot of things that you would normally not see in this way. This is not a substitute for three-dimensional TV or three-dimensional movies, uh, but it certainly is a way of viewing the rest of the media with 3D anytime you want to. I hope you'll try this and find out how simple it is and how nice it works, and I hope you'll tell your friends about it, because I think this is something that everybody in the world could enjoy, should enjoy, and should have access to. Thanks again, and uh, good luck.